is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham, The Chris Abraham Show. This is Season 5, Episode 17. And it's just a quick pop-in about the contradictions between uh, what Putin is all about, right? Um, I am extremely amused by a guy on Mastodon called Agora, at agora at mindly.social, who says... Putin has been planning this invasion for over 25 years. We talked about this in class in 2008. It was nothing to do with NATO. Putin always believed that he deserved to rule over the former Soviet empire. His raison d'etre has always been Tsar Putin uh, or Tsar Putin. Even his wife left him for it. That's not an easy thing to do. And my reply is essentially that... Um, 25 years of scheming for someone who has a normal lifespan is folly. You can't both want your, you know, um, Russia back, your Soviet empire, your, your, um, your former Soviet states back and play the long game of 25 years, especially when you're a cult of personality. This isn't the thousand year plan that the Chinese might have or the hundred year plan that Germans traditionally have, but this is like one man's lifetime. And so how can one both be aspiring, uh, for 25 years during a time during which most of the former Soviet, uh, countries were on their back, um, were uh, suffering from like 2008, from uh, economic crises, uh, from uh, all kinds of terrors. Why did why did Putin wait until they were all armed up under NATO, all armed up under the EU, um, at Russia's door? Uh, through I know they say that NATO and the EU are fully of my own volition, I hereby uh, apply without any coercion to become a member of NATO and a member of uh, the EU. But as we've seen, there's compelling reasons, and I believe that coercion, corruption, and even fomented coup d'etats and revolutions, democratic revolutions, I'm looking at Uzelinsky, have resulted in these uh, Eastern European independent countries falling under uh, the auspices of Western imperialism. So let's say that this time in history is the worst time for Putin to, to decide uh, to do this, right? Like he's been sitting around since 2014, like, you know, only grabbed Crimea, 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 and, you know, just been hanging back watching uh, John McCain and, uh, and, and the other neocons and neolibs, uh, you know, put uh, biolabs and, and, and black sites and foment um, uh, revolution, color revolution there, and it's been a real shit show, and, and the, uh, the general uh, blurring of the of Russia's uh, front against against Ukraine, having to deal with uh, the Azov battalion and and, and, and 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 you know light motif fighting there, and this belief that Putin is ready to rumble and roll all the way across Russia vis a vis. Genghis Khan, right? So, so is, is, is Putin, who's been waiting through the most vulnerable times of Eastern Europe, is he a, is he a careful, planning, genius, strategist, vis-a-vis Napoleon 
Genghis Khan, Hannibal Barca, Attila the Hun, and uh, Leonidas, or is he the the um, the fool who uh, was, you know, in many ways the uh, emperor with no clothing, who is suffering under a completely corrupt uh, regime where all of his tanks have um, have moldy uh, tires and um, where there are, there's no diesel available and all of his generals are corrupt and everybody's corrupt and it's a kleptocracy and um, uh, Putin showed that all of his troops are drunk and underfunded and undertrained and underprepared. This is not the sign of someone who's been planning. Uh, I mean, you would never say that about, I mean, no matter what is hubris, you'd never say that about Adolf Hitler or Mussolini, right? They, they got their, they got, you know, they got their trains are running on time. They got the, the trains are running on a time. Uh, and, you know, they rolled over Europe. They rolled over Europe with superior firepower, superior training at all. Right. So it really doesn't make any sense. And don't forget that um, for a 12, 16, 20, 24. Right. That's six administrations that he's been waiting. If he's been, you know, planning this for 25 years. That's like me, you know, waiting for 25 years to date a girl, right? Like, that's just, that's an entire marriage. That's two marriages. That's two marriages, um, you know, end to end. That's, you know, five Chris Abraham marriages. Um, I've never been married, but I tend to have, you know, long relationships. Uh, Longish, three, four, five years. Anyway... That doesn't make any sense. You can't be the most incompetent person in the world being, you know, having your lunch taken from you by uh, a little Ukraine, you know, that uh, that supposedly is itself completely corrupt and completely underfunded and completely undertrained and not even under NATO yet and supposedly um, using uh, seconds and thirds in terms of, you know, the generation of weapons and not even something like an F-16, which I think is a Gen 4 fighter aircraft, Gen 3. Certainly not a country that has a Generation 5 F-35 or, you know, um, SU-32 or whatever the number is now. And um, it just doesn't make any sense. How can you, con- is it Schroeniger's Russia? Is he both concurrently, it's like the same way that Trump was described, right? He is both ready to turn America into into 1930s Germany, but also laughably incompetent fool uh, um, baboon, right? Like, how can he both be uh, the cruel intention, brutal um, autocrat of great genius and, 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 cru- and brutality and also be an incompetent fool? Like, I do not see the fact that nobody sees this contradiction. All they ever do is dunk on Russia, saying how uh, incompetent, poorly funded, poorly trained, how nobody in Russia cares about the war, how nobody in Russia wants to fight the war, how there's zero motivation, zero patriotism, how Google, uh, how Russia is just ultimately going to fail, how... Uh, there needs to be regime change, how uh, quite potentially we're interested in that. Um, And concurrently, Russia's uh, Putin, no, Putin, not Russia, Putin, who, you know, didn't start off as a rose. Hey, Google, how old is Vladimir Putin? Vladimir Putin is 70 years old. Thank you. Hey, Google, what is 70 minus 25? 70 minus 25 is 45. So here we are, a 45-year-old man who could go ahead and roll over Europe, roll over Europe at 45, have the, you know, th- that's the age when most when most uh, nefarious people do roll over Europe. I mean, Napoleon, uh, you know, I mean, all of them. 45 is the sweet spot for being uh, a destructive megalomaniac uh, imperialist, right? 
And then to wait until you're, you know, 70 to even start kind of, if you will, doing a bad job on a, on a, on an underfunded, uh, corrupt, uh, impoverished country, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So what is it? Will Putin, uh, if not regime changed and, uh, foiled, um, will he in fact roll over Europe, which is in, you know, fact backed by the United States. And, uh, also, you know, there's Great Britain and there's Germany and there's the French are pretty brutal. And there's, you know, uh, any number of countries who have extreme memories, or is this some sort of campaign where you maybe everybody who believes that is like f scott fitzgerald where they can hold two contradicting thoughts in their head at the same time while being able to go to work in the morning hey google do you know um do you know f scott fitzgerald uh they're the quote about contradicting thoughts i don't know but i found these results on search Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's my thought for this morning. What do you think? Um, if you were to plan to ask the boss for a raise, or if you were to plan to enter the market, like, you know, why not do what they do in Silicon Valley? Like, Russia's never been known for long-term planning. You know, it's not um, uh, inscrutable China. It is uh, Im impetuous, impulsive Russia. Russia does impulsive things. It it throws millions of people to die, uh, you know, on the Western Front. It it um it does, you know, all or the East sorry, the Eastern Front of Eastern Front of Germany, Western Front of Russia. It, you know, it does impulsive things. They're they're a country of poets and novelists and romantics, right? So they do impulsive things. They don't they don't uh um, um, you know, keep their powder dry for 25 years as their despotic, autocratic czar Putin uh, waits gently until he becomes 70 years old after any number of threats to his government and after having to step down and let his supposedly, you know, first lieutenant take up the presidency or the premiership or whatever the hell he is while, you know, while he appeals to the democratic process of Russian democracy and then, you know, come in and sort of hang out and suffer all these sanctions and then lose a lot of his valuation and, you know, get dunked on by West Western banking and, and global imperialism and have his mega yacht stolen from him and have all of his people um, um, disallowed from global banking and having his economy uh, reduced and then having to pivot towards BRICS and then start up an entirely new thing with China and India and Brazil and South Africa and then, you know, and then wait until um, uh, Ukraine, what he thought was his most um, uh, ethnic and cultural ally. In fact, his Jerusalem, right? When the Vikings and the, and the, um, uh, when the Vikings and the Greeks made, you know, made, uh, a proto Russia in, you know, Ukraine that became proper Russia. Like if you talk to ethnic Russians, they're all about in the same way that Germanic people are like Valhalla Vikings, Valhalla Vikings, Valhalla Vikings. You talk to Russians or, or Eastern Europeans and they're all like Valhalla Vikings, Valhalla Vikings. My, my Moldovan friend, Sergei is calls me his Viking brother, my Viking brother. And, um, so there's a lot of like, you know, a lot of mixing. Ukraine is a total mixing bowl. In many ways, it's a, uh, a historically Jewish and Russian and Orthodox and Christian and Catholic and a multi culty mixing bowl. Everybody has, um, you know, peeps, uh, OG uh, reference. In many ways, it, it is Western Jerusalem. It is Western Holy Land. So... There's all that 
kind of rubbed in too, in addition to the fact that Ukraine is, a, is an incredibly uh, temperate climate that is um, incredibly resource intensive and an extreme breadbasket for the entire world. I mean, I think it's in the top five or the top 10 in terms of wheat production and all that other stuff. So, uh, there's a lot going on, but is, um, is, um, I don't, I don't get, I do not get, I, you know, if I were to be a conspiracy theorist, I would say that the entire world is paying, uh, Putin billions of dollars in order to play the patsy in this, in order to play the heel in terms of WWE parlance. I think that he um, goes around rattling his saber saying, I am evil, I am evil, I am evil. Maybe China pays him. Uh, you know, he is the Emmanuel Goldstein with regards to 1984 parlance. He is the forever bad guy. While we pivot between uh, the evils of China, the evils of Iran, the evils of North Korea, and the evils of Soviet Union. I mean, Russia. I mean, Putin. Um, you have the forever monster, right? It's not, uh, we don't know any of the, we, we don't have um, Osama bin Laden anymore. We don't really care about Kim Jong Un, Kim, Kim Jong Il. We don't care. We don't know any of the names of the mullahs or the or any of the people in the Middle East or Tehran or you know we don't know the names of of uh, Mujahideen slash uh, Taliban leaders in 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 Afghanistan anymore. We do not know um, any of those things, and we can't hate on any of the uh, kings or princes in, in Saudi because they're, they're our forever besties. So um, we need to get some of the heat off of Anthony Fauci and Bill Gates. And we need to get some of the heat off of Biden. We need to get the, some of the heat off of, you know, Samantha Powers. May you rot in hell. And, um, and like until, until Trump really gets in the media focus, you know, we need to, but, but one thing I do know that's true, Putin does feel like he has an existential crisis. He can read, and he can probably read English, and he reads that uh, we need regime change, Russia needs to be regime changed, Putin needs to be taken out, um, and um, if anybody is Attila the Hun, or, or uh, you know, comme on dit, uh, 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 Genghis Khan, or Hannibal, or, you know, uh, Anthony the Great. No, uh, I don't. I keep on forgetting whomever that name is. But, you know, a, uh, a Western imperialist who wants to trounce over and, and you know, you can call it for democracy. You can call it for uh, liberation. You can call it for um, uh, LGBTQ. So you can say it's for social justice and civil rights. You can say it's for the earth and climate change. Um, but whatever it is, it is export, exporting democracy, but because democracy is good, hey, you know what else they thought was really good that they could export at the tip of a, of a spear? They thought Jesus was pretty darn good. Like just replace democracy and civil rights and social justice, um, replace it with, you know, Jesus, the good book, the word of God. If you don't hear the word, you can't go to hell. So it is the job of um, of we're not we're not going out to steal lands and destroy and kill people. We're going out to share the good word. Ah, oh, come on, can't you smart guys see it? Oh, ninety eight percent of my friends with one thirty IQs and above don't see it. This is imperialism one hundred and one. Nobody said we're going to go out and kill uh, pagan babies. They say we're going to save pagan babies. They say we're going to save pagan babies. Nobody says we're going to go out and kill pagan babies. Everybody says we're going to go out and save their souls. We're going to save them their souls because if we don't save, the, save their souls, those poor little pagan babies are going to go to hell and rot forever. Oh, you poor sweet naive fools. I love you. 
I love you. Did I tell you that I'm practicing compassion this year? I feel nothing but love for you. But please, wakey, 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 baby, 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 boogie, boogie, boogie. Have a good day. Enjoy your Saturday. And if this is something you listen to later, enjoy your whatever day. I love you. Je t'aime. Ciao. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.